Hi, my name is Kunal Dudeja. I am the CEO and co-founder at Virohan. So healthcare in India today is actually the third largest employment generator. Um, healthcare is divided into three broad categories. Uh, doctors that form between 10 to 15 percent of the healthcare workforce, nurses that form between 20 to 25 percent of the healthcare workforce, and the largest category of healthcare workforce is actually paramedics, also known as allied healthcare professionals, also known as healthcare technicians. Right? Um, in India, the ratio of doctors to allied healthcare professionals is one is to four. For every one doctor, there are four allied healthcare professionals working. Whereas if you look at the advanced countries, you look at countries like the US or the UK, this ratio is one is to 20. Now India today has over 10 million allied healthcare professionals working in this sector. But to come to one is to the 20 ratio, we require this number to grow from 10 million to 40 to 50 million in the next few years so that we are at least able to match the global standards. So allied healthcare professionals are actually further divided into three categories. Uh, there is diagnostic, uh, there is curative, and there is rehabilitative. Now for India especially, the diagnostic and the curative sector has been booming uh, massively. Um, in diagnostic, you have allied healthcare professionals like x-ray technicians, medical lab technicians. In curative, you have technicians like OT technicians, um, uh, like emergency medical technicians. Now less than 7% of the allied healthcare professionals are certified in India because there was no centralized body till NSTC came up for certifying them. Each state at their own level was certifying them. Uh, and the biggest problem today is for good healthcare services, allied healthcare professionals are actually the most important because if there are 100 interactions with a patient in a hospital, 80 of these 100 interactions are actually with allied healthcare professionals. And the biggest challenge in India that less than 7% of them are certified, there was no centralized body till 2008. Um, so that, is, that needs to be fixed. One of the biggest challenges is that in India in general, education has been supply driven, completely disconnected from the industry demand. As a result, we rank, rank one of the lowest in workforce readiness when you look at the global standards, right? Uh, what needs to be done is that education needs to be demand driven. It needs to be given from the perspective of the employer and how these people are going to be working in the industry. For that, we need to understand three things. There needs to be technical training, there needs to be practical training, and there needs to be training on soft skills and grooming so that these people are ready when they enter the workforce to be able to fully contribute to the workforce in a productive manner. Over the last 15 years, I've been very passionate about you know, solving problems for all the organizations that I've been working for. And the main idea behind Virohan was that there has been a huge disconnect between what the industry demands uh, in terms of allied healthcare professionals and where we are today. As I said, even for India, you need at least 50 million healthcare professionals to be working in India today, and there are less than 10 million working in the sector, right? So the idea behind was to essentially bridge the market gap and become an organization that provides quality training to make sure that the workforce is ready when they enter the industry. The main idea behind Virohan was that the traditional education system in India is completely flawed. Uh, there are two large areas of failure. Training in India, there's a training failure and there's a scale failure. Let me dive deep into what do I mean by training failure. Training in India has always been supply driven, completely disconnected from what the industry wants. There has been little recognition for the certification. There has been little transparency in the kind of training that is given and usually very poor outcomes in terms of pass percentages and high dropouts. When I talk about scale failure, primarily is that most training organizations, when you look at India, are non-scalable because they're a high touch, high OPEX model. As a result, when they actually open in more and more cities and states, um, the operating cost becomes so high that there is no profitability. So the main idea behind Virohan was to convert and fix the training failure, fix the scale failure, to make the education system demand-driven, completely scalable, standardized, and make sure that the outcomes are standardized so that people coming out of the training system are actually employable because what is being trained are on demand-driven training modules. So the journey so far has been very interesting. It's been very challenging and at the same time very, very rewarding. Um, uh, when you look at the core of Virohan is a demand-driven training um, technology. 
uh, we aggregate jobs across India. We've aggregated over 600 million data points. Um, and the following has happened, right? Uh, we aggregate existing training providers. We standardize all their operations, all the way from sourcing of students, student financing, um, delivery of training, and linking them to jobs. Um, if I look at the metrics, our mobilization or sourcing model is 18x more efficient. If I look at student financing, we are one of the only players in India to offer integrated student financing. Over 40% of our students are on student financing. And this has led to over a 3x increase in enrollments in the like-to-like -like centers. If I look at the delivery of training, we've completely moved away from a trainer-driven module to a facilitator-driven, pre-recorded delivery of training with real-time assessment in classroom, which has led to less than 7% dropouts compared to a 35 to 40% dropout in the industry, over 90% pass percentages compared to less than 65 to 70% dropouts in the industry, and over 95% students on jobs at the end of the completion of the program compared to less than 60% if you look at the industry. So this has been the journey so far, and mostly because of the technology that we use to standardize all the operations, we've been able to fix, standardize, and make training demand-driven to achieve these outcomes over the last three years. Uh, one of the key future plans for us is to make sure that this training is delivered all across India, and then eventually we want to even expand outside India, go to Southeast Asia, the Middle East. The main reason for this is, India is one of the largest exporters of healthcare technicians. When you look at the Middle Eastern market, you look at this. The future plan is to be training at least one lakh students every year um, from 2023 onwards, right? We are a drop in the ocean. We don't even address 1% of the market. We're looking at a $78 billion uh, market in India for healthcare over the next 10 years. The future plan is to be one of the largest quality-conscious, demand-driven um, company in India. One key focus for us is going to be making these programs aspirational for the youth, making sure that they have huge career progressions once they finish the program with us. And for that, we are going to be actively collaborating with partners like GE Healthcare, uh, partners like Philips, Simmons, etc. Bring more such partnerships like Philips, Simmons on board, which are currently not working with us. Uh, work with, we are currently partners with UNICEF UVA program, we are currently partners with the GE um, program, we are currently partners with Indian Medical Association. The more such partnerships we bring, the more acceptance of the program in the market, the more aspirational it becomes for the youth, and the more demand driven, because these companies operate on the demand side, and therefore the training that we deliver is completely from a demand perspective of how these people are going to be working in the industry.